Hey students, this is Dr. Gonzalez. I hope you're having a good day when you're watching this video or a good night if you're watching it overnight. Um, let's just go ahead and get started with the following topics. <laughs> the neck joins the head to the trunk and limbs serving as a major conduit for structures passing between them. It extends anteriorly from the inferior border of the mandible to the superior border of the manubrium of the sternum and posteriorly from the superior nuchal line in the occipital bone to C7 and T1. The neck has four compartments that provide a longitudinal organization to the neck. There is a visceral compartment which is anterior and it contains the parts of the digestive system, for example, and the respiratory systems and endocrine glands. Then there is a vertebral compartment, which is posterior and contains the cervical vertebrae, for example, the spinal cord, cervical spinal nerves, and muscles associated with the vertebral column. And there is a neurovascular compartment, there's actually two of them, one on each side. They are lateral and they contain major blood vessels, for example, and they contain also the vagus nerve. The neck is divided into two main regions. There is an anterior lateral neck, which extends from the anterior midline to the anterior border of the trapezius and there is a posterior neck which extends from the anterior border of the trapezius to the posterior midline. The bones that form the neck or the skeleton of the neck it's mainly composed of the cervical vertebrae and the hyoid bone. The hyoid bone it's as you can see it's located in the anterior neck at the level of C3 it does not articulate with any other bone. It is suspended, essentially, by muscles, ligaments, and membranes that connect it to the skull, larynx, sternum, and the scapula. And it consists of a body, greater horns, and lesser horns. Now, let's talk about the cutaneous innervation. The skin of the back of the scalp and the back of the neck, it's supply by the dorsal rami of spinal nerves from C2 to C5 or C2 to C6. And the skin of the anterior and lateral aspects of the neck is supplied by ventral rami of C2 to C5 spinal nerves via cutaneous branches of the cervical plexus. So here in this example, posteriorly, we can see this greater occipital nerve which origins from C2, and as you can see, it's one of the nerves that could innervate the scalp. There's also this lesser occipital nerve, which origins from C2, and it also can innervate the scalp posteriorly. So to get into a little bit more details of the cutaneous innervation uh, for the nerves here on the posterior side, for example, we have the lesser occipital nerve which comes from C2 and sometimes C3 fibers can also contribute. It follows the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid and it supplies the skin over the lateral part of the occipital region and the upper part of the medial surface of the auricle. Next, it's the great auricular nerve, which ascends superficial to the sternocleidomastoid, parallel to the external jugular vein, and it supplies the skin over the angle of the mandible and parotid gland and both surfaces of the lower part of the auricle. We also got the transverse cervical nerve, which runs anteriorly and superficial to the sternocleidomastoid. This nerve supplies most of the skin of the anterior and lateral aspects of the neck. And finally, we also got the supraclavicular nerves, which come from C3 and C4. These arise by a common trunk which divides into a medial, intermediate, and lateral supraclavicular nerves, and they descend across the side of the lower neck. These are going to supply the skin at the base of the neck, 
and the skin that covers the upper parts of the pectoralis major and deltoid muscles. Now let's get started with a few of the muscles in the neck. Superficially, we're gonna start with the platysma. This is a very thin muscle embedded in the superficial fascia of the neck. The origin is gonna be the deep fascia that covers the upper parts of the pectoralis major and deltoid muscles. The insertion, it's the, where the fibers pass superficial to the clavicle and they run superiorly over the side of the neck. Some fibers also insert into the lower border of the body of the mandible. And other fibers enter the face and blend with the muscles of the lower lip and the angle of the mouth. The nerve supply for this muscle is gonna be the cervical branch of the facial nerve. And the actions is, it tenses the skin of the neck, it helps to depress the mandible and it draws down the lower lip and the angle of the mouth. Next is the sternocleidomastoid. The origin of this muscle is in the anterior surface of the manubrium of the sternum or the sternal head and superior on the superior surface of the medial one-third of the clavicle or clavicular head. The insertion is into the mastoid process and the lateral part of the superior nuchal line. The nerve supply of this muscle is the accessory nerve for motor functions and branches from the ventral rami of C2 and C3 spinal nerves for proprioceptive functions. And it divides the anterior lateral part of the neck into anterior and posterior triangles. The action of this muscle, as you can observe right here, is unilateral contraction so even though what, it, what i'm showing right now is not lateral flexion you can see how it's going to be there's going to be movements of the head and neck so one unilateral contraction is going to be lateral flexion of the head and neck to the same side of the contracting muscle and rotation of the head and neck to the opposite side of contracting muscle there's also bilateral contraction or flexion of the head and neck, especially against resistance or rising from the a supine position. And if the head is fixed into position, it also can act as an accessory muscle of inspiration. And if you want to learn more about this information, check out this video that we have tagged over here. And that's it for today. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed and I'll see you on the next one.